Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about anxiety, exercise, and skipped heartbeats. And before I get right into the episode here, I wanted to give a little aloha to TM. I'll just give the initials in case they didn't want to be recognized on the show here. But I got an email from TM and I wanted to respond, but they did not put a email in on the website. So it just had no reply to my website. So here we go, TM. I just want to thank you. I want to tell you what he said. Ms. Ryan, with three kids and wife leaving San Diego to Italy, it's a stressful travel event. And I just listened to Nine Myths, which was an episode that came out just a little while ago. Such perfect timing sitting at the airport. You are the best and have helped me so much. Appreciate you and your podcast. Thank you, TM. Well, let me just tell you, my friend, thank you for writing because that lets me know what you're interested in, what you are listening to, and what's going on out there in your life. I wish you and your family happy travels to Italy. Bless your heart. It will be so much fun and you will be tired when you return. So I hope it's nothing but great joy and wonderful family memories are being made. Thank you so much for writing. Now today I actually want to answer another listener's email with a question. And we will call this listener M. And M says, Hi, Gina, thanks for your podcast. It's awesome and has helped me a lot. I have one question. In episode 270, you are talking about palpitations. And you mentioned that there will be an episode about skipped beats during exercise. This is what happens to me from time to time, and I wasn't able to find this episode. Is it already out? I would love hearing from you and keep up the great work. You are helping out a lot of us. Thank you so much, M. Well, thank you for writing. I know that I have talked about it on a lot of different shows, but I didn't really put one together that was diving right into it and with a title that you'd be able to look up easily for that. So here you go, M. Thank you so much for writing and letting me know what your issue is right now so that we could address it. And I'm sorry you had to wait so long. I'm sure as you listen through the episodes, you will hear me talk about it. But here it is all together, anxiety, exercise and skipped heartbeat special for you, M. Before I get started, I do want to give a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I want to check in with you and see how you are taking care of your physical brain and your thinking mind these days how we think and deal with the stress of life affects our brain. So how well we take care of our brain and our mind is vital for how we are actually experiencing life. I want to remind you right now that you are worth the time and the effort to care for yourself, mind and body. I have someone to talk with to help me care for my mind and body, and you can too. You are worth it, so why don't you check it out? BetterHelp Online Therapy offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so it is so much easier than you may think. It's super affordable, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours, so no excuses. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash ACP. That's Better, H-E-L-P dot com slash ACP. 
And I want to give a personal shout out to Brendan at PodPage. Thank you, PodPage, for making podcasting so much easier for me. With no struggle over the website, I have more time, much more time, for making calming and inspiring content for my listening family. Mahalo, Brendan, and everyone at PodPage.com. I first wanted to give you a little quote from livestrong.com. I will have a link to the entire article, but I am not a physician. And so I wanted to see where I could find, you know, I didn't want a real sciencey or too wordy of an explanation of what's going on. And Livestrong kind of came to the rescue here. So I'll have a link to their entire article on frequent PVCs during exercise in the show notes if you want to read more about it. But here's what they said. Premature ventricular contractions or PVCs are extra heartbeats. They can arise from an irritable area in one of the ventricles. PVCs are usually felt as a missed beat or a fluttering in the chest. PVCs are relatively common and can occur during exercise because of the increased adrenaline in your system. According to the American Heart Association, PVCs are often harmless but can signal a more serious heart problem. Frequent PVCs that occur during exercise should always be brought to the attention of your doctor. End of quote. Okay, so as we always say here, let your doctor know what's troubling you so you can rule out anything that needs that kind of attention and you can address it with your healthcare professional. But after we have cleared that aside, I want to talk about the importance of exercise and the joy of movement, actually. It's like really loving being a human being moving your body. And I call it exercise too, because I like that, but it is movement. And when we can really find the joy in it, as Kelly McGonigal calls it in her book by the title of The Joy of Movement, how exercise helps us find happiness, hope, connection, and courage. Now that is Awesome. That is what we want to be looking at our exercise as helping us find happiness, hope, connection, and courage. And I will have a link to her book in the show notes. I am a huge fan of Kelly McGonigal's, and uh, I think that you will be too. You can also look up her TED Talk. She's pretty awesome. But here's a quote that she has. When you exercise, it increases endorphins, dopamine, adrenaline, and endocannabinoids. These are all the brain chemicals associated with feeling happy, feeling confident, feeling capable, feeling less anxiety and stress, and even less physical pain. Again, that's from Dr. Kelly McGonigal. So, I hope that you were able to pick up the key word in both of those quotes. The Livestrong quote and the Kelly McGonigal quote both talked about adrenaline. And at what other times do we pump our system up with adrenaline? When we worry, when we're in fear, when we have anxiety. And what is the common symptom or sensation with anxious times? The skip heartbeat or the PVC is very common. I hear it all the time. People feel it differently. Now, some say it feels like a flutter or a skipped beat, or some people talk about it as a thud or a throbbing or a flip flopping, a murmuring or a pounding. And they can feel it in different places in the body, such as the common ones are the chest, the throat, or the neck. So you can see where we could get confused with discussing it because people are experiencing it very differently. And when we're anxious and we're trying to find an answer, we're like, oh no, but you're talking about a flutter. Mine is a pounding. Like there's, so we often don't even connect that the same 
cause, the same actual physical thing that's going on inside the heart can be interpreted by each of us differently. Some people are more sensitive to their hormones than others. And we know this from morning anxiety, right? Cortisol levels. That is a great example. People who are having morning anxiety are extremely sensitive to their own cortisol. Now they may also have elevated cortisol beyond what a normal morning cortisol level would or should be, but they could very well be also sensitive to it. And because of that, we know that people are also sensitive to their own adrenaline. So when we get frightened with our own cortisol in the morning, we simply add more stress hormones to the mix and we keep the flow of adrenaline and cortisol going longer than may have been necessary. And this sets us up for a jagged and frazzled day. And on the other side of the coin, we can talk about exercise. The same is true. If we have the sensation of a skipped beat that may have been from, let's say, increased adrenaline from exercise, the exercise itself was raising our adrenaline, but we interpret it as a warning that something is wrong. We can do this either consciously or subconsciously. I'm not saying that your thinking is off or you're looking at it all wrong. This is not about how you are handling it because it could very well just be happening subconsciously. You are already in the danger zone before you even register a thought about it. But this alone will release more adrenaline and cortisol stress hormones, and perhaps more skipped beats than we might have had if we relaxed into it. Knowing what is going on can be powerful medicine and keep us from ramping up even more and taking a trip down the wormhole. This is true in the morning. We want to relax into that increased cortisol just long enough to get the brain thinking calmly enough to register that, okay, this could be increased cortisol. It doesn't mean anything's really wrong. It doesn't mean, as I used to wake up and say, oh no, here we go again. No, that was the wrong reaction. That was my knee-jerk reaction to my increased cortisol or my cortisol sensitivity. No. What I wanted to do and what I learned to do eventually was register after I could calm down enough when I woke up and felt it. Like I said, the knowledge is the medicine. Okay, this could just be what's happening in the morning. I can calm down. I don't have to feed into it. And right there, we just cut it off at what is already flowing through us. We're not adding more to it because it's the additional adrenaline and cortisol. And then we feel lousy getting up out of the bed and then we add more to it. Oh my goodness, something's really wrong. Now in the morning with the cortisol, what's good to do to move the body, move the body around. Once you get registered that, okay, this isn't going to kill me. I can get through this. Let me let this pass and flow through me. Then you can get up and do some movement and help it work its way out, okay? That's what we do with the cortisol. And with the adrenaline, when we're exercising, relax into it. Feel that flutter or that skip beat. I get these. I get these, yes. My skipped heartbeats or my, I used to call them murmurs. I'm old school. That's what my doctor had called them when I was a kid. It's there. I just kind of go with it. Okay, there it is. I note it. And then I actually make a physical response to relax into it. Now I can still keep doing what I'm doing, but I'm not clenching down and I'm not taking my focus into a danger zone. I am not going into a red brain with danger signals blaring. I'm just noting that that was a skipped heartbeat or a murmur and that 
okay, it was there. Let me relax into it. And if I'm in between an exercise, I can actually relax my muscles. And that helps me to just feel better and keep going. We can, rather than have knee-jerk reactions that we are in danger and that something is dreadfully wrong, we can relax with the sensation. This is called floating. The sensation is there. We didn't make it go away. We didn't cover it up. We didn't pretend it wasn't there. We just let it be there and we relaxed with it. That is floating. And then we can let the initial surge of naturally occurring stress hormones pass through us, whether they be from our cortisol in the morning, as an example, or our adrenaline during exercise. We can let them pass through us, leaving us in a more responsive posture than alarm reactive posture, again, signaling the mind and the body that we are in fact okay and that we got this. I'm so glad that you sent this question in because I really believe that we don't pay enough attention to our ability to float with the sensations that come up with us. So um, I really appreciate you sending this great question, and I hope that this is addressing some of what you were thinking about. We can be okay with these sensations. Again, we always want to make sure that we check out anything that is coming up repeatedly or that is bothering us. Clear that with your primary care physician and just let them know. Well, when I do this, I get this. When I exercise, I get these thuds or these murmurs or these flip flops. I I love the uh, different words that we can come up with for these things, but it's the same thing. Our heart, we're having those PVCs and they happen. So have it checked out if need be. And after that, or even before that, because everything goes better when you are relaxed with it, even if something's off, being relaxed with it until you get the uh, correct care for it or whatever is, is a way of taking care of yourself relaxing into it, clenching down, being tense and nervous doesn't serve us. It keeps us from healing. So we want to relax into these things. I'm sure that yours are just probably like everybody else's that I hear about. Most people that I have had these reports from of their flutters and their flip-flops and murmurs have been to cardiologists, have had all kinds of stress tests, and their hearts are fine but you will have to do that for yourself if that's required. I was never asked to do anything like that. So anyway, we are going to float into our sensations. Let them be there. We don't have to be afraid of them. Again, that little bit of knowledge that what these things are and how they are working, how our body is working with them can really keep us from our knee-jerk reaction in a trip down the wormhole. I hope this show was helpful for you, M, and I hope that if you all out there have a question for me and you want to send it in, I'd be happy to address it either directly like I did this one or you know, in I throw them into my other episodes. I see what everybody is interested in. So feel free to send me an email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. Before I read today's quote, I was wondering if you prefer the show without ads, or perhaps you might like to have access to the entire back catalog of over 600 episodes. Maybe you'd like some bonus meditation episodes. All of that and more are available for five bucks a month with our premium Supercast membership. Go to anxietycoaches.supercast.com and join us ad-free today. The link will be in the show notes. And now for today's quote. When you exercise, it increases endorphins dopamine, adrenaline, and endocannabinoid. These are all brain chemicals associated with feeling happy, feeling confident, feeling capable, feeling less anxiety and stress, 
and even less physical pain. And that's from Dr. Kelly McGonigal. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com. 